Well, she was introduced to many of us on season one of Drag Race Holland, where she showed us she's a triple threat, ready to take you down with her makeup talent. She took home the crown and has since been reigning the world, and now she's showing off her incredible skills on the host of Drag Race Holland, Fred Van Leer. It is Envy Peru. Hey, Envy. Woo! Hi, darling. How are you? Thank you for having me, you beautiful show. Uh, I am great. You look absolutely wonderful. I always wonder this about your hair. How do you do or how do you come up with the concepts behind your hair? Because everything is always looks so different, unique, and awesome. I am obsessed with hair. I'm also very good in hair, but this is so structured and sculptured. Mm -hmm. I cannot do that by myself. I have my, um, I'm going to give him a shout out to Paris Hair from Paris. Uh, because we also, we, we both of us come with the idea of uh, a hairstyle and then he executes it. And then I'm the model. <laughs> but that he does is an amazing so job. That is so cool. Do you yeah. have to, what do you do with the wigs when you're done? Because that must be a lot to hold that though, right? It's a lot, yeah. It's I think it's just, there's bottles of hairspray in it, and I cannot just keep it in my suitcase. You know, I really have to put them in boxes to keep them secure, or else they're gonna get ruined. I have paid too much money for this week to, <laughs> <laughs> to fuck them up. <laughs> uh, now, getting into your life, you were born in Peru, right? And then you moved to the Netherlands at the age of four. Yes, correct. Yes, uh, I came to Holland when I was four, together with my, with my mom and my auntie, uh, just for the reason because we didn't saw a future uh, for ourselves in Peru. And back in the days, um, my father didn't recognize me as his child, and my mom was like, "I don't, I'm not gonna raise my child here in Peru. You know, it's uh, yeah. I don't want my 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 child to be bullied later in life for a bastard child." So, uh, so we came illegal to Holland as illegal immigrants. Yes, it was a journey. <laughs> well, wait, and then so you've been in Holland since you were four, then? Yes, since uh, since I was four, I've been living in Holland together with my mom. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And then when it came down to drag, yes. how much of your influence is inspired by Peru versus the Netherlands versus? you seeing Drag Race on TV from like a US version? Like, is it a mixture or what do you say your drag is? It's it's, it's really a mixture because I, I, I've i never grew up with uh, with drag when I was a little boy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I saw RuPaul, of course, was one of the first ones that I, that I saw in television. But I remember when I saw Dana International for the Eurovision Song Contest. Yes. I was like blown away, you know, because you see transgender and I thought, it was so magical. I never saw something like that before. It's not, mm -hmm. not that I'm transgender, but I was really drawn to that femininity and to, to something different because I was different, but I didn't mm -hmm. even know it back then. And later in life, um, when uh, I came out, you know, that was a struggle also with my mom because I come from Peru and in Peru, mm -hmm. it's not really accepted uh, homosexuality or femininity. So I really needed to educate my mom um, what everything is, what homosexuality is, mm -hmm. what transgender is, what a drag queen is. And eventually, you know, she, she accepted me. Uh, this is a long story short. <laughs> 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 it's a long story short because I can write a book about my life, I guess. And um, when I uh, got into drag, of course, it was because of uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, I, I've been watching this, this uh, drag race since season one. And uh, and I thought, oh, wow, this is so amazing. And uh, secretly, I was already practicing in my room, you know, the makeup and yes. everything. And I was horrible. I sucked. I'm going to send you a picture. I looked horrible. <laughs> you were so lying. It came to you no. as a talent. What, how, did, how did you go from being so horrible to where you are now? Now, because I've always been uh, drawn to fashion and mm. uh, sci-fi and strong woman, Cena Warrior Princess. I was obsessed yes. with her. And uh, like a Wonder Woman, I am always being very inspired by powerful women because I had only powerful women in my life, like my mom and like my auntie. Um, so that is, is uh, always been one of my biggest inspiration as well in, in, in my drag. And mm -hmm. you also see it in, um, in, in Drag Race that a lot of, uh, I want to make a lot of references also to my roots, to Peru. 
you know, because I feel like uh, my Peruvian community is so unrepresented. So uh, I wanted them to feel represented and I want them to show not only Peru, but also the American, the world that I'm very proud yeah. where I came from because my mom always um, raised me with pride, you know, even though, you know, uh, things in life were hard. Don't be a victim, be a survivor. And yes. um, yeah, that's the mother of my mom. Always told oh, me. I love that. And we're going to get into her in a little bit because, of course, she joined you on the show. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I want to ask you, do you remember what your first public performance was in drag? Yes. Wait, oh, wait. Uh, performance. A really a booking. A performance booking. Yeah, yeah like okay. a booking. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, my first, uh, that's a nice story, because in season two, there is a queen, season two of Drag Race Holland, there's uh -huh. a queen uh, called Tabita, and she worked at the Mac counter, and I always came to her to ask for makeup advice. And back in those days, I only did drag on Halloween. I'm, I'm, that, I'm a Halloween queen. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't have, like, the balls to do it, uh, to do it, like, besides Halloween. Mm -hmm. And, um... She saw my pictures and she was looking at me and said, girl, you look so beautiful. That What a waste of beauty. You know, I'm going to book you for this evening here in Amsterdam at Amstel 54 and you're going to do a performance. And I'm like, I don't even have a name. <laughs> it's, about, <laughs> it's about, well, I had a name. My name was Carmen. But she said, no, you need a better name. You need something that is, that is more um, you, you know, just come with a name. And so Envy Peru came. And that was the day that I did my first performance. And I was totally new in the Amsterdam drag scene because back in that day, we had like the, the, yeah, the, the older generation queens and the very mm -hmm. fishy queens. It was not so diverse as it is now, nowadays. Yeah. And so there came this Latina looking beautiful. Well, I felt beautiful and the people <laughs> thought I was be beautiful. Uh, but looking now back at the pictures, I'm like, huh. Hmm. <laughs> I will not get away with that at this time, <laughs> but I got away with it that time. And uh, I remember my first song was uh, Favorite Things from the Golden Filter. So it's very seductive, very like, these are a few of my yeah. favorite things. Oh, I, I, I loved it. And from there, people start talking. People were talking, talking in the scene. And then I got booked over there and the reguliers and that club wanted me. And I was like, oh my God, I'm still working, you know, so how can I? How I gonna manage all of this? Uh, yeah. so that's how it, uh, it started actually in Amsterdam. So, did you end up keeping your regular job for yes. how yes. long until? Um, I was working at Mac Cosmetics, uh, I think five years, and just before Drag Race last year, I um, I quit <laughs> just before COVID. I was like, oh no, just. <laughs> I was like, finally, after five years, you know, I worked very hard. I was from March to, 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 to the end of the summer, I was fully booked. I went to see my family in Peru. And I said to my boyfriend, boyfriend, I'm so happy. When I go back to Holland, I can say goodbye to Mac and I can start doing drag full time. And then Miss Rona came. <laughs> <laughs> Everything got canceled, but luckily Drag Race called and saved my year. Yes. Well, yes. okay. So when Drag Race actually ended up doing the call, did you audition for the show? Were you called in? Because I know that some girls had said that they like received a phone call and they were like, you know, you should audition. Like, because I also, when I talked to Room, she was telling me that the scene in Holland and the Netherlands and stuff is very is a lot more, is smaller, is that right? Then Yes, it's, we yeah. know each other. It, I think they're like, you can feel maybe three seasons and then everybody in Holland is famous, every drag queen. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a very small scene and everybody knows each other here. Um, it's a mm. very nice, nice and warm community. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Where were you when you got the phone call that you were going to be on the show? Um, well, to come back to your question, we auditioned. Yeah. We auditioned uh, for, I think, they, they wanted to do Drag Race, I think, already like four years before, before this season. But it was a, it's an expensive production. So, yeah, mm -hmm. the, 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 it was 
every year it was, oh no, it's not going, it's not going, it's not going. So I, for this time, I was also like, well, okay, let's make yeah. another tape and um, um, and then see what happens, you know. For this season, I, um, I, I didn't have time to make a tape. <laughs> Because I was, <laughs> because I was, you're I, I booked was, and busy. I was booked and busy. I was really booked and busy back then. Before mm-hmm. you know, I, I already made my steps into the into the the scene here in Holland. I was already doing television and had my TV mm-hmm. show as well here in Holland. So uh, the production knew me already, but I want to. Um, I, I've sent them um, an, a video just for the producer also to introduce myself. Hi, I'm MV. Mm-hmm. This is what I've been doing. So uh, yeah, if, yeah, it was the casting tape. Yeah, th- yeah, that's a ca- kind of a casting tape. Um, and then yeah, we got the call. We got the call, and I remember I got the call when I was in Peru. Uh, I was in Cusco with my boyfriend. Yes, wow. yes, we just went to Machu Picchu, and we, we just arrived back uh, into the city. And I got the phone call, and I was like, "Wow, Machu Picchu is a sacred, sacred place." you know, mm-hmm. in Peru. And it was like, oh my gosh, this is like the perfect moment. The stars are aligning. I was just in Machu Picchu and I'll get this phone call. That is so exciting. I can't imagine, like, I always think about that for you girls and like what that is like, especially, and also you're about to be on a franchise that is seen all around the world now. Yeah. And, you know, where that never necessarily was before. Let me ask you, when you walked into the workroom, you probably knew what ninety percent of the girls. Um, all of them. All yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Who did you think your competition was when you walked in the door? Um, well, when, when we when we started to see what what did you, you ask a very good. Um, oh, I forgot what I wanted to say. Well, <laughs> <laughs> when we um, when we entered the the room, of course, I knew most uh, mm-hmm. all of the queens personally, except for room. Because Rue was more of a social media queen. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I didn't uh, know her personally. But I was the last one entering the workroom. Uh, so I was the, the, also the last one driven into the studio. Because we got picked up from our apartments. And then mm-hmm. uh, we, we, we've been drove into the studio. And um, I remember hearing the voices. You know, the queens. I was like, there was one queen. I recognized right away. And it was Janie GK. <laughs> <laughs> Because I love blah 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 blah, you know she has she she lo- she loves to talk, <laughs> and uh, so I thought okay, I I was expecting her to be on, and um, but the funny thing is that we didn't know that this uh, Drag Race Holland season is what was going to be this big of a success. We only thought oh it's only going to be on Video Land in Holland, mm-hmm. and just a few days before filming. We got the message, oh, no, it's going to be on Wow Presents Plus, so it's going to be worldwide. Wow. So that was like, oh, shit, you know. Oh, I was like, caliente. I was getting like, so hot, you know. It was so much, <laughs> suddenly, suddenly so much pressure. It was so, so much more pressure because not only yeah. Holland was watching, but the whole world was watching. So the moment that I entered the workroom, I didn't even hear my entrance line because all the girls were screaming like so loud. And I was so afraid that I was like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so, so when the episode aired, I was really happy that um, I got my sentence out. <laughs> yes, as you should have been. I mean, that, that is, that's crazy to figure that out just a few days before walking in. And then yeah. especially after you probably had already prepped all your costumes and everything. Yes, too. yes. Also now, Corona time. That was hard. Yes, Corona yes. time. Yeah. And then, so when it came down... To costumes and looks, I know one thing that was really praised about, you know, Drag Race Holland is that it didn't technically take out the aesthetic of some drag looks because in the U.S., you know, when girls fly to California, they can only bring a certain amount of bags or keep a certain amount of things in their suitcases and some big pieces may not be able to come. Mm -hmm. Did you guys have regulations like that or were you able to like just bring whatever you guys wanted since you were so close? Yeah, well, yeah, just because we are so close, we, we, we could load up a, a van uh, with our stuff. And, uh, but I thought, because I, I've heard, you know, how, how it works in the U.S., so I really packed, like, like, like a U.S. season. But I was, mm-hmm. I was so stupid not to ask, how much can I bring, actually? <laughs> but we all had a van, and some of the vans were very full, Zedashin, and some of them <laughs> were not so full. <laughs> We're less full, um, but um, 
Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it, it was, the, first of all, it was very hard to prepare in this, uh, in, in this COVID time. It was just, mm-hmm. you know, the pandemic was just starting. So um, you needed to be creative. What, what, yeah. it, what you're going to wear, you know, you cannot order something from the US because it can never arrive. You're going to arrive when there, you finish yeah. the season. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, we did. I'm very proud of all of the girls because with the resources that we had, we mm-hmm. did the best. You know, yeah. and especially in this very difficult time back then, last year. Especially. And when you guys went into the workroom and to shoot, that was like right at the start, right? So yeah. you guys probably were in there not knowing what was going to happen and you got out and it probably was a shock, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was a shock because, yeah, we got casted, you know, and then we thought, oh, is it still, is the show still going on? You know, is it still mm-hmm. going to happen? Is it, how are they going to do it, you know, with, with this pandemic and and eventually, it's yeah. It, it, they they made it work. They needed to. Um, we filmed two weeks later um, because of it was hard to get everything yeah sorted out mm-hmm. for the for the season. But eventually, they did an amazing job. And there was like a corona um, corona policeman doctor that making sure that everybody <laughs> has like their face masks on and keep on distance. So um, no, they take they took very good care of us. Yeah, that's great. I yeah. I watch Holland and I get very, very excited because I think it's showing such a different form of drag than what we're used to in the U.S. You girls all have such amazing looks and personalities and talent. And you guys also, the great thing about opening this up internationally is that when you all are auditioning and, you know, you guys are working from week to week to week, you kind of haven't fallen into the I just want to be a bitch on TV train yet. You guys were still like in the good, like you wanted to be on TV, you wanted to do well in the competition, you honestly cared more about that than, you know, the social media aspect or being afraid for being like railed online or getting this and that. You were more authentic to yourselves. Um, Did you feel that on the show? Because also you... Abby, oh my God, was there too, right? And you guys had worked together before and yes. you were like in the, you were in a house together, right? Mermaid, Mermaid Station. Um, yeah. 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 So did you feel like your relationships with some of the girls, like, did they get better? Did they suffer? Like, how was that working with girls that you had known? Well, um, the Dutch queens here are very chill, you know, we are very, mm-hmm. we have a totally different mentality than, uh, than the US queens. We way more laid back, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, we very direct in what we, uh, you know, sometimes it can hurt somebody, but it's just Dutch directness. <laughs> but we are very, very down to earth. You know, we don't need all the shablam, blah, blah. We do that on stage. But, mm-hmm. you know, uh, outside of drag, we are very chill boys, you know, all of them. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and yes, yeah, so I already had like friendship built um, with, with the girls. You know, I've worked with Mama Queen. I booked her for one of my mm-hmm. shows as well. I worked with Janie in a dinner show. I was her understudy back then. And uh, yeah, <laughs> can you imagine? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Janie was one of the top girls. It still mm-hmm. is. And uh, even uh, back in that days. And she is the one that I always, um, you know, when I see Janie, I'm like always drawn to her because she's such a great performer and great entertainer. She gives so much energy. And um so I was really already a big fan of Janie's mm-hmm. and a uh, Chelsea boy. I already knew as well. I worked with him as well on, in, in clubs. And those two are the ones that I grew closer. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Closer uh, during the series, during the during drag so days. Cool. Yeah. They, yeah. they both as individuals are really awesome. They were the ones I think at when the first season came out where Chelsea boy was already knew who I was and was like reaching out to me. And I was like, Oh, this is so cool. Like the international girls, like you guys were, yeah, you're like you said, like really, really chill. And that was really cool to see. But I'm very good with all of, all of the girls, you know, Um, this this is a, this is a a, a moment in our lives that is going to bond us for the rest of our lives, Mm -hmm. you know? So whenever we see, we're always very happy to see, we're very happy to follow each other's career and we support each other from, yeah, from 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 our phones or whatever, you know. We always yeah. cheer, we cheer each other up. Um, 
So I have uh, some fan questions that I'm going to pepper in throughout this interview. Okay. But one fan wanted to know, as a duchy myself and not living in Amsterdam, it's very hard to find the drag scene for me because I have no idea where to look. What's your advice? Move to Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Holland is not that big. And um, we are really aware that here in Amsterdam, we live in a bubble. You know, um, everything is here. Uh, all the drag queens, queer nightlife, our community is here. And also, it starts to get in Rotterdam as well. But if you want to get to know the girls, you really need to go. Yeah, you, you really need to come to Amsterdam. Because I think at that way, you're going you're gonna to find your tribe. Amsterdam, for mm -hmm. me, um, made me, made envy. You know, I was living in Hilversum, which is a town like 30 minutes from here, and I was stuck there. And I, I had like the same what, what, this, what this boy has. And mm -hmm. I took the decision that I really needed to leave my town. And if I wanted to, you know, be a drag queen or be in the community, then you need, need to look for it. Yeah. So uh, that's what I did. And it was the best thing that I have ever done. Yeah, and it's so true, too, because, like, you can have these small towns, and, yeah, you can have a drag scene in them, but it's probably extremely small. Yeah. And then on top of that, if they're not totally for the LGBT community or it's a very, like, small town, in order for it to progress, it's going to take some time. So, yeah. yes. Yeah. Pop out to Amsterdam. Yeah. Or Rotterdam. Also, <laughs> they're doing also very good now. They have their, they have yes. their pride nowadays. Well, let me ask you, now that the show has kind of like had its life and it's like taking off, are you seeing a lot of more baby queens popping up everywhere? Oh, yes. Yes? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> this Pride, we, um, you know, our Pride in Amsterdam is amazing. We have uh, a kennel, uh, a kennel parade with all the boats here on the kennels. It's like the, the one of the best year or maybe the best year, the best day of the year for me. Uh, because it's so much, it's Amsterdam is beautiful at that day. And this year, we didn't have like this big of a pride like mm -hmm. we used to. And uh, so we had some little events here in the city uh, or in the, in the Fondel Park, Pride Park, Paradiso. And I, 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 I've been seeing like in the streets, in the gay street here in Amsterdam, the reguliers, we were seeing like new baby queens there, oh. some new little baby queens there, you know. And it's so sweet because they approach me and they... You know, they come with, yeah, I've been I'm watching your season. You inspired me. It's like, well, wow, you know, that's so nice to hear because I've been locked up most of the time <laughs> <laughs> during COVID. You know, it's so nice to hear that in person um, yeah. from, from people. And a few, last week, I was doing the pre-show for Bianca Del Rio here in Amsterdam. <gasps> yes. And um, uh, yeah, it was amazing. And after the show, I wanted to go back to the dressing rooms and then people were lining up. To, uh, to to take a picture with me or they brought presents for me and so I said to the to the to the promoters if we should have had like a meet and greet as well for me I guess because yeah. after the show like the theater was not empty because was, there were still people lining up to um, to see me that is crazy so that probably was like one of the first times like you yeah. had been in public public since corona right yeah it's such it's such, a, it's such a big theater you know and it yeah. was very nice to 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 see the impact, but I, I, I'm, I'm starting to feel it more now, you know, now things are slowly yeah. starting to open here in Amsterdam as well. And, uh, you know, when we go to the gay streets, then they already see like people looking like, oh, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> and that's very sweet. That's very cute. Yeah. When, when you were on the show, did you have a favorite moment, like a favorite either outfit or competition or something that you actually were very, very proud of that was shown? Um, my favorite moment is um, Zedda Sheen's look, the Kermit the Kicker, the Miss Piggy one. That's my favorite moment <laughs> of all season. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I'm still <sighs> wondering. Oh, she's going to kill me for saying that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Well, my, yeah, what, well, what, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, one of one of my favorite moments. I think you already know. It's like my mom being there, um, being there with me. That was a full circle moment for me. Yeah. That was simply beautiful because I know, as I grew up in a very 
small town in the country that was very like conservative beliefs, gay was wrong, you know, very religious and all of that. And I know that I had a very similar thing, like with my mom, like, you know, we didn't see eye to eye at first and being able to have that support come through and being able to see her like so supportive of you, yeah. it not only does you a service, but it's also doing a service to everybody else watching, whether they are a younger kid or they are the mom that's watching and be like, you know what? That mom is good with it. I should be okay with my you know, child too. And that's always such a great learning lesson. Yeah, especially the Latina moms, mm -hmm. you know, I've received a lot of message from Latina moms and from Latino kids that are watching the wow. episode, you know, it started uh, the open to conversation about, yeah. yeah, who they are, you know, uh, they, they made an effort and it's, it's, it's your child. It's about love, yeah. you know, it's, uh, you know, we do nothing wrong. It's don't, you know, don't, don't. Don't take it too serious, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's you... all love and fun. Just be yourself. Yeah, exactly. And you, there was another question that came in. I do want to ask if this is true. It says, during the makeover challenge, filming had to be interrupted a few times because your mom kept waving at the cameraman. Is that <laughs> true? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. Oh, my booby is falling. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> no. Goofy. Yes. No. Yeah. My mom is, is, is. This was her first time in a television studio. Mm -hmm. So the moment she was, she came in, she was like, "Oh wow!" Like how how Jimbo came in, like you know, yes. <laughs> entrance. That's how my mom came in. It's like, "Oh wow!" Oh, she was like <laughs> waving to the to, to every cameraman. So, okay, we need to do that again. So, okay, now Miss Mama Peru, you need to do it again. You need to come in and just hug your son. You know, the camera is not there, but it was so cute. You know, and um, yeah, also in, <laughs> when we were lining up on the on the main stage she was like hola <laughs> hola <Video. laughs> and i was like mom mom <laughs> shut up <laughs> no it's really cute no it's true yeah that's true <laughs> that is adorable so has she been like really supportive since the yes. show yes oh, Her, my mom saying those words to me was mm -hmm. um i i, I think that I've watched the, that video, I think, 50 times. And every time I was crying, you know, because I needed those words from her to come out, mm -hmm. of, out of her mouth. Because that was not something that we prepared. We were, we were put on the spot, you know, from, you know, uh, it, it, and it came from our heart and I felt it. Mm -hmm. And uh, ever since we have been so close and uh, we, call, we, we call each other every day. And... Um, you know, and I, I and I love to help my mom and to support my mom, you know, and that's yeah. something that I really wanted to do, especially winning this crown. I want to make enough money that I can support my mom as well. And I'm very happy that I can do that now. That is so cute. Yeah. So what you're saying is you already sold that dress? No, but that's that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> so my mom wants I want <laughs> what? Give me the give me the eighteen thousand euros. My mom says. Well, that's dress. what I said. <laughs> well, Rue. Okay, I I want to ask this because when I had room on room said that there was a rumor going around that that was a leftover dress for Beyonce. Is that yeah. true? But it is Beyonce. It yes, is it Beyonce. Is true. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> I mean, it looked good on you. I don't, I did wonder though. This is what I did wonder. I was like, you know, when that dress first came out and it was all of you, I was looking at every single one else going, won't fit you. Mm, maybe you, not you. And I was yeah. like, well, that's going to be really sad if it's somebody it doesn't fit. Yeah. Like who? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Tell me, Joseph. Well, Sainter Jean would not have fit in that dress. <laughs> Um, like, you know, we could like, um, uh, mother, what was her name? Um, mother madness, um, um, Madam madness, Madam madness. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. like, and so I just felt so bad. I was like, that must've been like so stinky to like see that. Yeah. Um, but it's, it was not about the dress for me. It was about winning the title about... and, the, and the dress was something nice that came as an, as an extra. Yeah, exactly. 
So let's talk about that title. Let's talk about you winning. You are in the top. You end up being crowned. I know that you had said on the chop that you ended up having a fake scepter and fake crown during the time, you know, because they didn't have it ready. Did yeah. you know at the time of filming that you were going to win? Like, did you know that? Because I know that a lot of times in America, they film multiple endings. Did you know in that moment that you were going to win? Well, I felt it, you know. No, we, we filmed, uh, we, we, yeah, we filmed uh, multiple um, winners yeah. also in our season. So I didn't know. But um, I was like the first the one doing the crown, crowning moment. So uh, it was, I was really like, oh my gosh, you know, RuPaul said my name, everything was so genuine because it was like, I really felt that I won. Yeah. And then uh, it's like, okay, camera crew, reset, you know, Janie, come to the front, you know, and uh, <laughs> so, I said, like, oh, okay, now here, here you go. <laughs> here you have this Miss Holland crown, you know, and uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, then it's, uh, yeah, then it hits you, it's like, oh yeah, we still don't know actually. Uh, so... The, the, the race is not over after filming the season. Yeah. It starts after filming it the starts. seasons. Yeah, yes. because everybody want to have their content uh, on ready and on mm -hmm. point, you know. So what are you going to do with how are the people are going to react to you? Uh, you know, that's yeah. also very important. You don't know that. So it, it could have gone any, any, any way, any direction. You also had the... Um, the... I don't know if it was an unfair advantage, but you had the unfair advantage of the season dropping so fast after you guys were done filming. I believe it was like three months as opposed to like the U.S. can be like a year. No, so, we had two weeks. <laughs> you had two weeks? We had three weeks after the uh, when I when I when we were done filming the um, the, the season because I, I I made it to the end <laughs> as you know. And then oh we wait, had really? Yeah. Oh, spoiler, yeah. guys. <laughs> 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 then we had uh, three weeks till the first episode so uh we basically had like uh three weeks to get all our stuff together our website merchandise photo shoots blah, 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 blah. I, I, oh, i'm getting sweaty God. from thinking about it again oh, wait. <gasps> Oof. yeah it was hard it was very hard for all of us you oh. know and um also after after the, the the last episode, I think every single queen was like, "Okay, I'm out now. I need a yeah. I need a moment for myself." Yeah, it was hard. I'm happy they did it differently this time. This time they had like a, two, a month or one month and a half just to prepare their thing, to and be able you know, to, yeah, yeah. you need time. Ready. Yeah, yeah. When when you ended up watching yourself on TV, what did you think? And what was the reception like? Did you start hearing from international fans? Like, how did it start? Um, I was very nervous. Um, but I remember that the, the first time that we got announced, my Instagram went poof to the roof. I was like, uh, for the first episode air, I was already at 100K and I was verified. It went so quickly. And I received wow. a lot of messages from a lot of Latin queens, from um, from the Rue girls. Welcome to the family, and um, yeah, yeah, it was it was it was a warm warm welcome, you know. And then you think, oh, now, now I need to uh, impress you guys. So <laughs> I hope yeah. you like me, you know. Well, but, um, you did. You impressed them. You win. Where were you when you figured out you won? Were you like recorded? Did you have to record a reaction? Uh, I was, we were invited to the studios of Vincent TV production, the, 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 who makes a drag race. And we were invited with the, um, to see the, 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 the last two episodes with the top five. And then me mm -hmm. and Jane and GK watched the, um, the last episode together. <sighs> yeah. So, uh, we were, uh, yeah, just there at the office, uh, watching on a big screen just with each other with, uh, and with, yeah, with. The production company and uh, and that was yeah that was a special moment and my heart was pumping and we filmed uh, a reaction video but we never posted but mm -hmm. it was it was beautiful you know um Janie was so genuinely happy for me she hugged me she kissed me you know so you deserve it girl and uh, we're gonna take over the world and you know you did an amazing job and that's our friendship you know even though she yeah. didn't uh, run the crown she I, I won a sister for for my whole life. And I'm really sure that Janie's moment is yet to come. You know, yeah. she's a superstar. 
That is so great. Like, I absolutely love that you have that relationship, you know, especially with somebody in the top and especially all these queens. Um, so you get off the show. Another fan question came through. Okay. Why have you not picked up your $1,000 Mr. B gift card from your main challenge when? <laughs> Mr. B came after you, apparently. They, like, posted this question, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> oh, my goodness. And the, the, the thing is, I live, like, in the same street as Mr. B. <laughs> I think it's really, like, like 100, 200, no, not even 100 meters away from me. Uh, I honestly didn't have the time. No, that's that's bullshit. I could have done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could have gone, but I... It's a, okay, where, you know, there's no party, you know, there's no reason why, yeah. uh, you know, I, I could go there and get the, you know, the, you know, you know what they sell, right, Mr. B? Yeah, it's like, like, leather and bondage Leather and, stuff, and right? latex and lube and everything. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe for the lube then. I, I would yeah, come. I would maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe you just get like a, a lifetime supply and you're good at yeah, that, you know? Yeah, 800 uh, liters of lube. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> My friends and I always laugh. Have you ever gone on like Amazon or something and looked? They sell like tubs of lube. Tubs. You can buy like gallon tubs of lube. And I was like, why would you ever want like a tub? Oh, that's that's a very horny lady. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's so horny. I, I, I... This little yeah. tube? No, give me the whole thing. No, nope, you're gonna get the <laughs> whole thing. Um, so you you get off this show. Unfortunately, you hit Corona times. You know, so you're not able to travel fully and do all the things uh, that any queen would want to do after the rain or uh, when the raining year. So, what was that year like? You know, being stuck in quarantine and stuff. Did you get any of the perks that the other queens do or was it kind of like oh we'll see what happens when we open back up well because i could not travel um we needed to fo me and my manager needed to focus my career differently mm -hmm. so uh we had a focus here in holland and so we made a sheet okay what do you want to be on and uh so there were some shows like the national test the uh talk shows the glow up uh, make up your minds which which is um uh, a TV show that we transform celebrities into mm -hmm. drag queens and they need to guess who this celebrity is, yeah. you know, who is in drag. It was amazing. And I was uh, one of the heads judge uh, at that TV show. So um, I want to build a name for, for myself here. I want to be the, the most known drag queen here in Holland, household name. That was my goal for this year. And when everything opens up again, then I would love to travel. I would love to go to the UK and to the to South yeah. America and to uh, to to yeah to to meet everyone. But um, it's gonna be there, you know, um, very soon, hopefully. Yeah, no, it definitely is, and I I like and I respect that that you stayed homebound and you looked at ways to be able to make a bigger name of yourself in Holland. Yeah. That's very very smart because. Also, that probably gave you more momentum, whereas a lot of the girls, when they were doing the digital stuff, the momentum fizzled after a while. Yeah. And there's only so much you can do. Yeah. And also because of the title, you know, I was able to to work with uh, with brands and do campaigns and uh, go to Drag Race Spain or, you know, and do a lot of campaigns. So because of my social media was growing, yeah, you know, the, the requests came in. So that's how mm -hmm. that's how uh, you, you yeah you make your money then. Yeah. You you said Drag Race um, España. I want to talk about that. You are the first judge ever who yes. was a winner of RuPaul's Drag Race on a Drag Race franchise. And that, to me, I know that we briefly talked about it on the chop, but that, to me, was so special and so needed because oh, yes. having, having a drag queen tell another drag queen how they're doing, they've been in the competition. You had experienced it. And you were also extremely well-spoken in your critiques. Your critiques Thank were you. very, like, constructive, 
but also like exactly what these girls needed to hear. How was that for you? It was amazing, you know. Uh, it was very nerve wracking to look uh, back at the uh, at the episode because as well, I was a little bit insecure about my Spanish, you know. So far, oh, are the Spanish people are gonna understand me? You know, it's uh, I hope they're not gonna make fun of my very Dutch accent. <laughs> But uh, the, the opposite happens, you know. They're really, um, I, I received so many lovely messages from a lot of people saying, you should be uh, for the next season, uh, one of the judges there again uh, for more episodes. So yeah, who knows, you know. But I really think uh, that it's needed. It's really yeah. needed, you know. I, I know what I'm talking about. And other winners of the franchise know what they're talking about. And they... Uh, I, I went to them after the um, after recording and, um, you know, to just chat with each other. And they mm -hmm. said to me, this is like so special that this is like the first time. I was like the first RuPaul's Drag Race girl that I ever met, yeah. for example, you know, and that, that, that wow. was so special f for for a lot of the for a lot of the queens uh, there. And I think that they should change their format a little bit, bring, mm -hmm. you know, uh, some more queens uh, to the judging panel because they know what they're talking about. Because yeah. we experience a lot in Drag Race that they invite guest judges into the judging panel that actually don't know nothing about drag. Yeah. Or, you know, they just know, oh, my mom, you know, mm -hmm. all the days. I love Drag Race, you know, but you don't know, <laughs> you don't, you, but you don't, you just love Drag Race. But do you know drag? You know, do yeah. you know what drag is about? And that's, that's what we know. And uh, so, yeah, they need to do it. Please do it, RuPaul. You know, yes, invite more it, queens. So I would love to see Bianca Del Rio on a guest judging panel. That would be really good. The comic timing would be good, but it would be so truthful, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. You, um, so let me ask you, when you were on the panel... And mm -hmm. when you saw these um, Espana queens, you saw what? You saw the top four? Top four, yes. So, as like, you know, we all probably know at home, you didn't see anything before seeing those top four. You didn't get the privilege of seeing that. So, no. did you think in that top four that Carmen was going to come out the winner? Absolutely. I saw, uh, uh, you know, I was... I was excited because, um, you know, I don't know a lot of the, the Spanish girls. I have some of them I follow, but uh, you, I'm always happy to be surprised. Mm -hmm. And at the moment I saw Carmen Farala, I was like, yes, winner, winner. I saw it in her eyes, in the presentation, yeah. how she walks. And, um, you know, I don't want to discredit the other girls because the other girls mm -hmm. were amazing. But yeah. Carmen had something very very special especially you know in that episode and she did mm -hmm. amazing in that episode and um now seeing the whole season yeah do yeah no it was building up for her she was yeah. doing very well and um and so, yeah some of the, the the other queens were like yeah you know it's still a little bit finding who they They're, are yeah, who they are yeah or yeah who they are as a queen um you know or in their styles and i think carmen are really knew what she wanted to do and who she is and how she wants to present herself. And yeah, I was really impressed um, with her, but uh, also with the other ones. I loved, yeah. I, I loved, uh, honestly, this is not the Miss Universe answer, but uh, honestly, uh, all the queens in their own way have something very special and all of they, them yes. are going to work, you know, because they have that special. Mm -hmm. That's why they're top four. Yep. Yeah. And just because you don't win doesn't mean that you're not going to be successful outside of it. Too, Absolutely you know? not. Like, no. And, you know, some of them, like, you know, like Poopy Poison may not be the most polished when it comes to looks, but that comedy yeah. and who she is as a person and an individual is what's going to, like, push her to the stardom. And yeah. that's so cool that you got to see all of yeah. that, like, in front of you. So there's a, there's a market for everyone. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I want to ask you about your makeup because your makeup is simply phenomenal. I think even from the time that you were on, you know, Holland to now, it has improved into something even better that I didn't even know was possible. Where <laughs> did you learn all of this from? Like, you are you self-taught? Uh, yes. Yes. I started doing makeup since I was 18, secretly in my room, you know, uh, always wanted to be a makeup artist, but, you know... There are like prejudices about makeup artists. I don't want to be that that gay that does makeup. Mm -hmm. 
I was still like with that inner homophobia that I was dealing yeah. with back then. And uh, later in life, I thought this is something I'm very good at because if you see my childhood photos, I, I was always drawing, 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 drawing. Drawing Pokemons, drawing Dragon Ball Z character, Digimons, yes. everything. I was drawing everything and strong women as well, like big lips, you know, big mm -hmm. eyes and lashes and big hair. And um, I'm basically doing now the same, but then on myself. So it makes sense now I'm older. Mm -hmm. uh, it, everything built up to this uh, moment. So, yeah, it, it started with drawing on paper and now on the face. And then, like I said uh, earlier, I um, started working at Mac. And even though I didn't have like, um, you know, um, a, a degree, you know, uh, mm -hmm. makeup, they tested my skills and I thought we want to have you as one of our makeup artists here. And uh, that's how it all started. But when I when I started at Mac, I was looking at the other makeup artists and said, oh, my goodness, you, you guys are very good. So, <laughs> I, started, <laughs> so I started doing uh, a makeup course um, 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 while I was working uh, at Mac. Yeah, but it's also practice, practice, and keep on, you know, um, keep on evolving. Don't don't get comfortable, you know. Mm -hmm. Keep up with the trends, and I'm every year. I am also like evolving and transforming. If I look back at my pictures from last year, they're very different than now. And probably yeah. in another year, I'm gonna look at the pictures from now and say, oh, you know, there's gonna be growth, growth, growth. And I hope in my drag is gonna be growth, growth, growth because I want to grow. You yeah. never stop learning. No, never stop learning. And then when you get no. to that point, you find something else to keep learning. Um, yes, yes. You you put that makeup skills. You're now doing Fred's makeup for season two. Yeah. yeah. How <laughs> did that even come to be? And then also, how much different is it doing somebody else's face than your own face? Um, well, because I... I you know, I worked as a makeup artist. I'm, I'm, I'm familiar or, or comfortable working on somebody's face. Mm -hmm. um, for Fred, I already uh, did once his makeup just before all Drag Race. It was for a, a TV show in Holland that were doing a, a parody about Drag Race. Uh, so that was actually the first time I did Fred's makeup. And he remembered that. And um, he wanted to have me for the first season. But if, yeah, I was on the first yeah. season. So, um, so for this second season, he, uh, he just wrote me, right. He just called me and said, I want you to do my makeup for this season because I really wanted it for the first, uh, for the first season, but you were on, but now we're going to make it happen. And I said, of course, Fred, for you, you know, I would do it. And he still thanks me because he said, even though you're a winner, you still, uh, are able to service yourself you know and do my makeup you don't have like the ego to no 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 now that i'm the winner why should i do why, why should i yeah you know and so for no i really because i love fred and i love how, uh, the person that he is i did it with a lot of love and because i think it's it's, it's a fierce gig you know being the raven of holland yes, <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and then also it's also smart because you're staying around the people who could potentially put you on to judge again or something just saying you know like Always just right? stay in good graces, you have to. Yes, yes, exactly. Exactly, looking, darling, you understand. <laughs> yeah, of course I do. <laughs> yeah. Um, Looking at your career and where you have come, what do you think your proudest accomplishment is? Ooh, my proudest accomplishments. Um, my proudest accomplishments, I think is the first, my first booking. My really? first booking that I did, you know, because if I didn't do that booking, this all would not have happened. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that I had the balls, you know, those years ago, I just gonna put them in the stress, I'm gonna rehearse this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this number, and I just gonna give a big middle finger to everybody who thinks differently, who mm -hmm. thinks this is weird. You know, I choose for myself, and that was the moment I chose for myself. And um, and it was, and, and it was for something good. And I felt that I was doing it for something good. And yeah, and now this happens. And of course, Drag Race. But I think if, if I really go back, having like the balls to just do drag, you know, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think that that also just can translate to anything in anybody's life, especially when it comes down to 
just trying, you know, we're, we're so afraid of failing that we never even want to try things anymore. When in actuality, you can try it and you can fail and that'll make you a stronger person, or you could try it and you succeed really well. But if you never Mm -hmm. tried, you'd never know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And like having my mom, you know, in one of, in the first, I think in the first months invited my mom to come to a drag show because she was like against what I was doing, but she was trying to make an effort, you know? So, okay, let's see what this kid is doing now. You know, first I have to do that he's gay and how he's dressing up, you know? So what the hell is going on? What the hell, what the hell did I do? (laughs) Why did I come to this place, you know, to haul that? (laughs) I should have stayed in Peru, you know? No, but, um, when she saw the magic of drag, and of course, I do. I did two of her favorite Latina songs. You mm-hmm. know, I'm smart. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> but she was like, she 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 understood. She understood it. She and, understood. Uh, and from there, she uh, she supported me, and she bought me a dress for that evening. Really? So. Yes. 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 That that, that, was, that is yeah amazing. That, yeah, that was her way to say. I'm I'm trying and uh, I don't want to see you unhappy, you know, uh, I want to see you happy and making you unhappy because of my prejudice is not mm-hmm. why I came here. You know, I want you to see, I want you to, to, to succeed in whatever you're doing. That's so powerful. Like that, that yeah. is any moment. Like when you as a gay child are not accepted for any type of reason to have a parent turn around and do something like that is like, yeah. That sets it right in your heart, you know? Like, that makes you yeah. feel good. That's awesome. Exactly. Yeah, that was beautiful. Um, speaking of, another fan wants to know, what is mm-hmm. your message for every little Latinx brown boy? Just love yourself and surround yourself with the right people. You know, uh, self-love is something very hard to achieve, but the moment that you achieve it, that's the biggest gift that you can give yourself in your life. I, I agree with that. I think the, the hardest thing that I ever had to learn in life was why do I need to care about somebody else's opinion of me? Why People should I lot. have to mm-hmm. worry about, oh, okay, you know what? I am a gay individual. If this person doesn't like being gay, I need to hold myself a certain different way around them or, you know, this and that, like, you're not making yourself happy. You're trying to make no. other people happy. And once you can get past that and accept yourself, you're good to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but th- those are also like good life experience for if, if, for, for gay people, even though it, mm-hmm. it's hurtful, but it makes us the, the people that we are today. We, we, can, re- real, we, we can really um, interact with everyone. And we, yeah. we are like chameleons, you know, you can put us whatever and we, you know, people will like us because yeah. we, we know how people work. Yeah. Uh, I have two more questions for you and then we're going to let Miss Envy go. Um, When it comes down to this show being called Exposed, um, I ask all the girls before they leave to expose something that happened on Drag Race that could be funny, behind the scenes tea, anything that you want to give that the fans may not have seen on the show. Like I've had girls talk about heart to heart moments. I've had Room talk about um, her putting a dress on a light and apparently it almost lighting something on fire at some point. So there's like all of these stories. Is there anything that didn't make camera you wish would have? Well, not something I wish would have, or maybe it, <laughs> it did, but um, for the family resemblance episode, um, I was really touched by the story of Mama Queen and her father. You know, her father being there in drag, I thought it was so beautiful and so powerful. And when they announced I was the winner of that episode, um, I said, no, I want to give this win to Mama Queen. So I gave my win away, actually. Yeah, because I felt also like she deserved it because she also has like a beautiful story. And I already had like three wins in my pocket. And I felt embarrassed as well, you know, winning some winning again you know for that yeah. episode now seeing the episode back i understand why i won the episode but mm-hmm. um at that moment because you're just like in the heat of the moment and you're so in a bubble together i was like no 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 this doesn't feel right you know mama queen should ha- should win this this uh this episode so i gave it away to her and for the reason that her story with her father really touched me 
but I never did. I never showed uh, that. Wow. Yeah. That, that's that's really, really sweet. Yeah. And that would have been a really touching moment too. It's also a, a moment kind of like, um, I think I felt so much more in love with Carmen Ferrara was because she had that moment with Dovima where Dovima was talking about, you know, like, oh, you know, she helped me do this with the dress and she gave me hers and she made her own. And mm -hmm. that made her so relatable. And when mm -hmm. you have those moments, I wish I would have seen that. Wish I would have seen it. Yeah. I think it, it, it could have been something very beautiful, but it's, they decided yeah. to uh, to to cut it out. And I understand, you know, but uh, that's, that's, that's the first thing that uh, pops, uh, pops in mind. And even, yeah, pops up. And... Um, but the, the, yeah, the, the fights between Sunny Sheen and Abby and who and Janie were like, oh, oh, oh. there was nothing. I, I wish they showed that a little bit longer because yeah. that was Yeah, did that last longer? Oh, yes. It was oh, very intense. Oh, really? It was very intense because they filmed that at um, at our green room. And that's actually the, 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 the room where there's no cameras, where all the stuff uh -huh. is, you know. And that's the, 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 yeah, the room that we chill. And then this whole fight started. And you see like production... Okay, guys, go to the green room because we have some things <laughs> fighting over here. And then <laughs> 10 seconds, boom, cameras were there, you know. But it was like a whole build up to the moment that you saw uh, yeah. Eric, you know. It was already like... <gasps> Crazy. It escalated to outside, inside, you know. But, um, but luckily, you know, everybody's friends. <laughs> we yeah. sorted it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My my last question for you, Envy, is what's next for you? What do you have coming down the pipeline? Is there anything you're excited for? Anything you can talk about, or is it all surprises? Um, there are there are very nice things coming up, um, but it's all yeah all things that I cannot talk about. But oh. just yeah yeah just see my Instagram. I have very cool collaborations. Yeah. That are co coming up. Also, like a very cool collaboration with a makeup brand. Uh -oh. I'm not gonna spoil too much, but um, yeah, um, th there's a lot in store. That's there's a lot in store. Just follow me on uh, Miss Envy Peru, and you will find out. You know, I don't want to get in a fight. You know, with any of yes, them. Yes, of course. <laughs> so so follow, to follow Envy on Instagram, and you'll figure out about the secrets when the secrets come out. Yeah, yeah, and we, I was even talking, you know, to uh, with a friend of mine who is, uh, who is a DJ here and a music producer to do a song, you know, a sexy MV song. So who Ooh, knows? Who yes. knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> well, thank you so much, Envy, for spending some time with me. Absolutely love you. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Go show Envy some love. Go follow her on all of the platforms. Um, until next time, I'm Joseph Shepard, and that's the beautiful Miss Envy Peru. Thank you so much, Joseph. Mwah!